sorry. Ah, now we go. Uh, okay, welcome this afternoon by uh, my presentation about OpenStreetMap for the web. Uh, usually I give presentations about PHP and MongoDB and Xdebug, so this is a bit of a different talk for myself as well. Um, I hope you still find it interesting. Uh, there's still PHP involved, there's also a little bit of MongoDB involved. And but the general idea is that I'm going to talk to you about what OpenStreetMap is and how you can use that uh, for web applications, basically. All right, so I'm Dutch. I live in London. Uh, I will try not to speak too fast, but forgive me if I go too fast after all. Uh, my day job is as one of the uh, PHP MongoDB driver maintainers, so that's my day job. Uh, I love maps. Uh, it's more of a hobby than work thing, uh, but I've rolled into OpenStreetMap about four years ago, uh, since about when I moved to London, and it's always been a really good group. It's it's my hobby kind of thing. And you might know me better because of OpenStreetMap, uh, sorry, Xdebug. Uh, if you have any questions about Xdebug or uh, MongoDB itself, come find me after the talk. I'll be around uh, both today and tomorrow. But uh, with that out of the way, let's get started. So this is the most complicated slide that I have, and I thought it'd be a good thing to have it at the start in. So, to even think about mapping something is not as simple as it seems, because the Earth isn't a sphere, as you might know, right? It's a bit of a pear. Uh, tastier, but not very round. Now, in order to map this kind of thing in a flat map, which you usually see on the website, um, we haven't invented, quite invented round circular screens yet. But maybe in the next five years that might be there as well, of course. The, uh, yeah, the idea is that yeah, you need to put this sphere as a flat map. And those things are called projections. And projections are used differently in different countries. So in the UK, where I'm now currently living, we use uh, a thing called OSGB 36. And that standard creates a sphere that is very conforming to the shape of the UK. But it's pretty much useless anywhere else. Now, what most websites to Google Maps as that being Maps, Yahoo Maps, or whatever other maps there are, including OpenStreetMap, they will use a sphere that is approximately correct for the whole world, which is called WGS84, which is very handy also for GPS users. Now, the reason why I did research into this in the first place, because me living in London and all, liking all kinds of astronomy things, I went to the global or the, the observatory in Greenwich, now, if you're not familiar with Greenwich, this is where the zero degree line goes, right? So I go there with my GPS and stand right here on the red line, which goes right through the museum. There's a very nice red line, well, it's not red, but it's a metal line on the ground. So I go stand there with my GPS and it doesn't say zero. And uh, that is quite interesting because that is not something that I had expected. Actually, the zero line is about 200 meters to the east, which is the blue line that you can see on my map here. And that is because the Greenwich Meridian was created according to a different mapping system than currently WGS 84 is. All kind of confusing. I know France has its own uh, projection as well, the Netherlands has it, Germany. So if you get coordinates from your local government, they might not actually be the ones you can use in in a, a web application with a map showing you. So something to be around. Anyway, uh, other cool thing is there's the different projections, right? So even if you have a coordinate system where you can pinpoint things on the map, there's also different ways of showing this. Now this is a really quite annoying projection um, with, uh, yeah, you can see that North America and, and South America are very well shaped. So the shape is correct, but if you look at, for example, here, um, like, what is this here? I can't even see the names. Let's pick India and set on this side. You can see that the shape of India is actually really quite strange, right? Because this projection is really only good for the Americans. Now, there's other projections as well. If you live in Australia, you might want to have an upside down map, for example. I don't think it's the most practical, but I think it's quite funny after all. Uh, because here's Australia, of course, in the center of the map. And there's different variants, like this is a Peter's world map, which is 
in my opinion, one of the most annoying lab productions because it distorts the shape so much, right? Uh, but it, another uh, strength about this projection is, is that all the areas are represented according to their real size, even though the shape isn't right. What's used mostly on the web is something like this. It's a, a spherical mercator. Actually, this is not spherical mercator, but um, that adjusts sizes according the further you go north and the further you go south. As a limitation it has, however, that it can only go to 95, no, 85 degrees north and 85 degrees south. But if you do that, you get a square map out of it, which is really quite a nice property. All right, so a little bit about OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is like Wikipedia for map data. The goal of the project is not to be the new Google Maps or the new Bing Maps. Its sole function is to have a database of geographical information containing information about everything you can find on the planet. Um, it's also an open database. Everybody can use OpenStreetMap data as long as you credit it and if you make derivations of the database, mix it with other database, then the data that you mix in also have to be um, published under the same license. It's very similar to what GPL does for software, but this is it's called Open, data, open Database License, which is there for uh, databases, like OpenStreetMap really is. It is not uh, just showing a map on the website. That doesn't mean that there isn't a website, of course, that there is. So now I have to figure out whether my internet connection actually works. Yay, success. Um, and yes, yeah, so this is OpenStreetMap.org. It is a website. This is, I think, Berlin. Let me zoom out a little bit. Of course, now we have to wait. It does load Berlin. And this is a, is a standard layer. The standard layer shows a lot of information. It's probably not the nicest or the cleanest one, but it does work very well. well once all my squares load, that is. Let me zoom back in again so I can show you the few differences. So this is center of Berlin somewhere. But this is only one representation of the data. There's a few others as well. So there's a map specifically made for, for cycling, which lists the cycling routes here in blue dashed and like regional cycle routes with letters and things like that. Or there's a transport map, which lists all the tram lines and metro lines and bus routes and things like that. And all those data come from the same database. It is just represented differently. And then there's the humanitarian one. Well, I probably should show Paris instead of Berlin, because we are, or, or rather Montrouge, because we are not in Paris anymore. I noticed that yesterday because I was walking here from the hotel I was, and I walked underneath the of Fric, and I said, okay, I'm not in Paris anymore. It's like not being in Kansas anymore. But um, Montrouge, which I don't know how to pronounce properly. But. So here we are. Of course, now I can't find it. Help. Oh, it's right here, yes. So yeah, all the different map layers. And you can see that here is actually what I found it in, in France, specifically all the buildings that are, and almost all of the addresses. It's really, really nice to have, because it makes it really useful as a map, right? Whereas in London, you would find that not very many addresses are mapped, but lots of restaurants and pubs and all kinds of shops are, are mapped which in Paris the days I found water mm, bare still at the moment. Anyway, different layers showing different aspects of the data. Let me go back to the slides. All right, so of course you want to show this map on a website and there's different APIs from that. There's no such thing as an OpenStreetMap API that allows you to show maps on a website. The OpenStreetMap API is the API that you use for submitting data to OpenStreetMap and for reading data out of it. To show a map on a website, you use different uh, JavaScript APIs. And in my opinion, the best and the simplest one to use is one called Leaflet, which you can find at leaflet.js. Uh, <coughs> it is by far the simplest one. It is as simple as using Google Maps API. Where, the, yeah, there we go. So let me have a quick look. So this slide doesn't involve PHP, because it is basically HTML JavaScript. And that's all you really need here. So if you can see here, 
Um, we have a style sheet. If you have IE8, then of course you need to include another style sheet as well because it's slightly different. Uh, I think they're fixing this actually in the next version of Leaflet. And then of course you have the script. Script contains the data itself. Uh, I just set some sizes and then basically those four lines, or <laughs> I say four, but it's really eight lines, um, then all the map to, uh, to the diff container. And there's a few things that are actually that I sort of have to put out because you can configure here with this URL which layer of tiles you use. In this case, I'm using the standard OpenStreetMap tile layer, but it's perfectly possible for you to download the data, say, for example, for Paris or for a university, uh, create your own tile server with your own styles and things like that, and then serve it out of there instead. Because OpenStreetMap is a volunteer run project, and a volunteer run project doesn't have an enormous amount of money. We get uh, some of our hardware donated, some universities host our data. We pay so for some of our hosting, but we cannot compete with Google Maps here because we just don't have that much money or data centers and things like that. So if you're really making an application that uses OpenStreetMap a lot, like a mobile device or things like that, you sort of require to set up your own tile service, which you can easily do with in about a day or something, you can do that. Also important is uh, the attribution. As I mentioned before, if you use OpenStreetMap data, you need to tell the rest of the world that you're using OpenStreetMap data. And there's a few other things. So basically what I do with setting my map view, uh, it's just the location where the map opens. And this is somewhere in London, but of course it doesn't really matter where I do that. Okay, next slide. So, it's also possible to provide a name of a location, say Mont Rouge, uh, France, and uh, you feed that to an API called Nominatim. Nominatim is a side project of OpenStreetMap. It is still hosted in OpenStreetMap hardware, and the developers are developers that also write other parts of the OpenStreetMap infrastructure. Now, the open, what Nominatim does is you can give it names of places, addresses, pubs, restaurants, locations, train stations, and it will then give you coordinates back for it. So that's what I do in this slide. I'm giving it the location Mont Rouge, France, and it then, as you can see, sends me right on the center of Mont Rouge. Now let's have a look at how I actually do that in PHP, which is the most simple thing ever, <coughs> because we just require or load a URL, right? So I'm using this, just a web service. We use nominates and openstreamer.org, we use search, we say that as format back we want JSON, you can also do XML. But we say that we only want one result back, uh, which was funny because I tried doing this in Paris and there's actually five Parises that are being returned, with a few of them being in the US. And they showed up first. So uh, yeah, my first demo here of the Paris France, but I've used Monroe French because it actually works. And I'm just using PHP's file web contents here. Uh, with URL encoding the name of it, and then just showing what the data looks like. And you get back something like this. You get a bit of stuff back that is not really important. Um, if you want to look up things in the OpenStreamMap database, you get to use the OSM ID, which is in this case, well, just a number. You get a bounding box around it. A bounding box is the outer extents of the objects that are being found. Also the center point and that long, the display name, which gets really quite long because Apparently, Mont Rouge France gets exported to, now excuse if I mispronounce this, to Mont Rouge Ante Rue Haut de Seine, Ile de France, including a postcode, and on France Metropolitan. I'm not sure why it doesn't say France itself behind it, but some of you might be able to explain that later to me. Right. And it also finds, it, it also gives an importance. I think the importance is actually information that comes uh, out of links to Wikipedia data. So the issue with the five Parises gets fixed by having links in the OpenStreamMap data to Wikipedia. That data is used in the indexing for nominatim and it uses the population size for importance. Paris, France is the pair that has by far the largest population. So that's why it now shows up as the first thing as well. In this case, Mont Rouge isn't very important. Uh, it's only 0 0.82 important whatever that number might be. 
Right. So let's have a, a quick demo that I wrote. If you want to have a look at the demo and what I did there, yeah, you can go to this URL where you can just download it and have the same thing really. So we can type in Paris. Oops, I have to actually click the button. And then you get the five different Paris. Well. So if I click on the first one, it draws, it draws a nice box around uh, the Paris area itself. I'm not sure why it shows up twice, but it is exactly the same thing. Then it is also in this tiny town in, uh, in the US somewhere. It's kind of funny. Uh, I remember, actually, I can show you that it was actually really quite funny. I gave the same similar talk in Chicago. And the first one is, of course, the Chicago as you expected, right? However, the second one is this. Can anybody recognize what this is? Any of you are Top Gear fans? No? Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. This is actually on a racing circuit, a corner, and it's the, 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 the racing track that uh, Top Gear uses for their shows, which I thought was quite funny seeing that the first time. Anyway, uh, next, oh, I need to go to the next slide then. Anyway, so the opposite is also possible. Like if you point the cursor on a location in the map, it can give you the name of the place. And this is again Chicago, but let me go to Paris. I need to aim a bit better with my big cross. Uh, let's go to improve. See if it can point it out a bit better now. Should be that building. And if you zoom in all the way, it will actually tell you exactly the name of the building, these streets. Uh, I guess it picks this one and not this one. Although it should pick the place. I think in some cases it isn't actually mapped correctly as a full address, so it doesn't always accurately know what the building is. But this should work like 26 Bis Avenue de la, de la République. And this is the geocoding equivalent of what Google Maps provides you. And it all works in open data. So if you find something that is inaccurate, you get to fix it in about a minute, which is pretty cool. So this is reverse uh, geocoding, as it's called. And yeah, we do that in a similar way of doing, uh, looking up a location for a name by just requesting a URL. There's another API that is not open to Prima, but it's something similar. It's geonames.org, uh, which is also something that the openstreamweb.org website uses as an additional source for finding location information. And again, you can just request the URL and you get some JSON back out of it. Yeah. Do change your username though. Uh, as you can see, there's no password in it. Uh, it doesn't need a password, just the username. So just make something unique up for yourself. All right, so let's have a look at OpenStreetMap data itself. OpenStreetMap data you can download. Um, you can download as an enormously big XML file. In this XML file, file there are basically uh, four major uh, tags. There's nodes, and node is a specific point on the map. So in this case, this node is 50 degrees latitude and 8 or 31 degrees longitude. I have no idea where it is. But that doesn't matter. I'm trying to remember. It might actually be in Paris. Belgium, maybe. Anyway, um, so nodes are the points. A way is a road, or a square, or land use, or buildings. And a way is encoded as a series of links to nodes. So a way having its own ID and it has a user, it has then links, node references, as they are called, to the node IDs. And that's how ways are stored. Both ways and nodes, and also relations, which I won't be covering right now, can be described by adding tags to it. There's standard tags such as amenity equals pub, amenity equals restaurant to denote that a specific location is a restaurant, or highway equals secondary for roads and things like that. There are stacks that are called name, uh, address stacks as you can see here that I have for house number and street. But it is also possible to define your own tags. Uh, I know I'm at foreign PHP. <laughs> Very <laughs> handy. Um, so you can define your own tags as well. Uh, so if you're really interested in when there are sunlight on benches in a park, you get to define your own tag for it. If you want to tag trees and the, the species of the trees, you get to do that. So it is a really open model. If you have a special interest 
and something ge geographical. As long as it's something that you can verify on the ground, it can be verified by other people, it has a place in OpenStreetMap. There's a few exceptions here, like administrative boundaries, because you can't actually see the lines being painted on the ground, of course. Of course, also are very useful to have on the map. But in general, we don't store things like elevation, because elevation um, can be obtained from other sources that are also open enough. So you don't feel the need to add that to OpenStreetMap. But the heights of hills, for example, that is, uh, that is stored in many cases. So it's a very rich data set. And depending on your point of view, you want to highlight other things over other things. Right, so tags can be edited in editors. I tend to use an editor called Jossum. Some people find that way too difficult. Um, I think it's rather simple, but that's just me. And the way how things are worked, like this is Oxford Circus in London. You have uh, Regent Street here, the big red line. There's actually two red lines. Uh, but the red line that I have here is the same on the map as this one here. And as you can see on the right hand side here, there's a few tags. So there's an alternative name, because sometimes things get renamed. Happens. And it's a highway secondary, it has a name Regent Street, it has a name in Russian, called Regent Street, is actually what it says. It is a one way street as a reference, and, and so on and so on. This is an editor how you can, you know, can do this kind of things. Now, what we tend to do in London or all over the place actually is something called a mapping party. And a mapping party has its focus to add more and better data to the map. In London, we tend to do about every two to three weeks. In summertime, when it's light enough in the evening to go out and mapping. And at the moment, we focus on, on buildings, addresses, and points of interest. So large areas of London have very good coverage and points of interest, which is in most cases far better than what Google Maps has. Uh, mapping parties are also done for other things, uh, but I'll get back to that in a moment. So editing the map is actually quite simple. If you log in and open streetmap.org, uh, find a location on the map. Actually, let me just do that instead. Have a location on the map and you then can then just click edit. Now in this case, it's probably going to ask me to log in and I won't. But, uh, I wouldn't have, but it has pre-filled in anyway, so I can just click log in, log in instead. And this will then pop up an editor, as you can see, if all the tiles load. As you can see, there's also satellite imagery behind it. This is satellite imagery provided by, by Bing Maps. And they have given us a license to be able to use this information. So yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, interesting things here. Somebody has modeled the staircase in front of the building very, very well, it seems. In my opinion, probably a bit too much. Uh, like all the steps are done. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Let me click on it. It's a footpath. As you can see, it is slightly out of sync, right? And I also don't think that, let me, see, let me click here. This, is, uh, this has been mapped as a crossing as well. So you can see that the details actually uh, quite good here. So I don't actually have anything to add quite easily. So I won't be doing that. But this is a very simple editor, it runs in the browser adding an address or a restaurant or a pub is fairly trivial. Uh, basically, you click on something, uh, I should click on, oh, so you can click on new, it creates a point, uh, then I can give, where did it, I'm oh, sorry, I need to click first, never mind. I click here and then you can say, well, it is like, is this a place of worship or is this a conference center or something like that, or a cafe. You can give it a name here, like cafe, Amazon, I suppose, gets, Cafe Coffee Day sounds better to me. Uh, of course, I will not be saving this information because the moment I save it, it shows up on the map for everybody to see. Um, and you can give it cuisines and internet access and addresses and things like that. And when you're done, you can click save and that's it. There's no, no other things necessary. Right, let me not save this and go back to view. Hold on. Yes, 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 leave the page and so on. So as you can see, this is actually really simple to edit. So I will skip over the slides because they're not interesting anymore, because I've just demonstrated this set. Now, mapping parties are also done in developing countries. Like one of the first uh, areas that had actually an OpenStreetMap team sent to them to teach them how to map was one of the largest slums in Nigeria, which is Kavira. And they have taught a local team now 
to do the mapping and they have now mapped their, their neighborhood, their slum, in great, great detail. Um, it's a really interesting site to have a look at. I think it's mapcarrier.org. Um, and it's really, really interesting to see what I, what I have done there. So, um, right. Another thing is that you might have heard of a typhoon that hit uh, the Philippines about a week and a half ago. And a team of OpenStreetMap is now helping them mapping those areas uh, up to the, a great detail and not only to look at what you could see on old uh, satellite imagery, but we're using new satellite imagery from after the typhoon has hit to map field hospitals, uh, destroyed buildings, things are not, that are now underwater and things like that. And it's actually really, help, really helpful for the people, for the relief workers on the ground to see well, yeah, which roads still work and which buildings have been collapsed to provide care and services to the people that have been affected by this. And this is an article in The Guardian that I actually found uh, just now when looking for it. Which, actually this, this screen is actually large enough to show you, which is brilliant. So, I know this is a bit fuzzy, but on the left hand side you can see the detail from what was there before the typhoon and what was after that. And so much information has been filled in, buildings, parks, hospitals, uh, water supply points and things like this. And this is information that on the ground changes every day, right? New water distribution points are created. And because it's so easy for people to map this, workers on the ground actually add this data. They get big printed maps every day to be used in a relief work, which I think is a really, really good case for OpenStreetMap. Something that Google tries to do in developing countries, but there's one big difference there. Because when you supply the data to Google, it's a commercial company, you're never going to get the data back. And the only thing that you actually will be doing is supplying Google data that can use for commercial purposes. So I have a sad face out for this. Yeah. Google has a project called Google Map Maker, you might have seen this at some point. And yeah, the only thing that you really do by doing this Besides improving the map that you can only see, there's no data behind it. You can only get to the things that you see. But that is, is of course, not nearly as much information as you put in the first place. Right? So you end up spending time contributing to a commercial company where you can just as well contribute the data to OpenStreetMap where everybody else can use it and improve on it. And that's where you got a happy smiley face. All right, so, oh, let you not read the text. Alright, so let's have a look at how we get to the data. Well, first of all, you can download the whole planet. It's a bad idea as it's a 20 gigabyte, 26 gigabytes compressed XML file. At the moment, it is actually a bit larger. I think it's up to 33 now. Uh, if you uncompress this, it's about 600, 700 gigabytes of file on disk. If you have that large disk that are fast, by all means, download it. Uh, I don't have the disk space for that, so I can't. But luckily there's ways of uh, getting only uh, smaller parts out of it. So you can download the whole country, like uh, England in Great Britain, or you can download all of France and things like that, uh, because different ex extracts are provided. What I tend to use for demos at conferences is I use a natural extract. So here I have a link to the one in Manchester, but of course there's also one for Paris. So let me open the link for you. Where did it go? Oh, there we go. So this is Manchester, where is Paris? I guess it's at the key. So I'm not sure why my nice graphics are not showing right now. There we go. So you can see all the extracts of all the different cities. And what I've done for a demo that I'm going to show later, I've downloaded this extract, imported the data into MongoDB to then be able to show it on the map. Uh, so if you want to play with the data, download the city extract. Paris is still fairly large, it's still 230 megabytes of data to download, but it's all there. And if you even want to do smaller parts or extracts that are in there, you can use all kinds of different APIs to get to the data as well. And one of the most interesting ones, I think, is an API called Overpass. And Overpass allows you to do kind of queries on the data that is stored in the OpenStreetMap database. So for example, what I'm doing here is I'm querying for all the nodes, all the points, and all the ways. Sometimes uh, props are mapped as buildings, which are ways. 
and I only want to find the pubs that have real cider. Um, so that is what this query does. All the queries that you can do are, for example, find me all the bus stops that are within 200 meters of a pub, or find pubs that are within 200 meters of a bus stop, because that might be handy if you want to get home very late, and things like that. So it is a really rich query language that you can use. Okay, I've already shown you the different visualizations of the data, so I just have some slides in case the demos don't work. Let me continue with that. And then, at last, I want to show you something that I've been demoing before we get uh, to this. So, I've created a website which you can also look at at maps.derecrafton.nl, which is where I try to put many different experiments with data that I've downloaded on the map and then do some interesting things with. So, actually, the last slide here, let me go back to that one because, sorry, once more. So, this is the cycling map that I've always shown you, but I've done some data analysis. Uh, this is an area of London. Anybody wants to guess what this is? I've spoken about this specific aspect quite a bit already. No? It's the density of pubs in London. It's very important. OpenStreetMap uh, in the UK has a unofficial slogan which goes like OpenStreetMap in Great Britain, pubs and cycle routes a speciality. Um, this is also why if you actually look at the map, which I think it's still funny, um, if you zoom out, actually, it's much better to see this in London because we have so many more pubs than you do. About 5,000 are mapped. So if you have a map here of central London once it loads, once it loads, one more. Okay, I need to go one more. You see all the metro stations already. If you zoom in one more, you see two things that now show up on the zoom level which are churches and pubs. And the pubs and churches are the only points of interest that show up one zoom level before everything else. So this is how you can see that OpenStreetMap has been created in the UK, I suppose. But it does make sense because people navigate by pub in London. They, I mean, because there's so many, right? You say, go to the pub with this name and take a left-hand turn. So it makes perfect sense to show them here. I'm not sure whether that is the real reason, but I think that is the, the more politically correct reason for doing this. Anyway, uh, back to Montrouge here. So here's a map, full screen map one with leaflets. And I have different layers on the side here. So the first one I'd like to show is, is one called Triangle. Triangle is a project that I'm working on that makes it easy for people that don't want to deal with complicated alerts for still adding data to already existing objects in the map. So let me enable this and you can see all the points of interest that are around here. So let me zoom in a little bit. Um, I haven't imported everything, but there should be quite a lot of data in there. So let me click on this one. What is this? It says amenity telephone. Apparently it's a phone box by France Telecom. Um, or what do we have here? We have uh, a library without a name. So the reason why things are red is that those are the points where OpenStreetMap doesn't have full information yet. Now, I haven't quite all, gotten all the way there where this whole application works. But the library, if I click check in, then I can give it the name right. And it's a very simple to do. Now, the more information you fill in about the points of interest, the greener uh, the icons get. And this is just something that I've been working on to make it easy for people to add data. So that's just one thing. Another thing is, of course, is called five pubs, which finds the five closest pubs. So where are the five closest pubs here? Sadly, they are too far to walk, because not very many have been mapped. Actually, Café Oz is the one where there was the pre-drinks last night, actually, and that is one of the five closest pubs here now. And I've walked this distance yesterday. I can assure you that it's still a 45-minute walk. So I'm a bit disappointed by the data quality in France for this. So we can still click on it and you get the name of it and whether it has wheelchair accessibility, things like, like that, and the name of it. Um, Le Cantine here is a pub, doesn't have much information. Lotion Bleu, not much information here. It's a bar restaurant, so I'm not quite sure whether it is a pub. But... So this is another thing, it is basically a 
for example, finding the five closest stop in central Paris, it's a bit better, of course. <laughs> so another thing that I've done is put all my Flick images on the map. Uh, that has nothing to do with OpenStreetMap data, it just looks cool in demos. Um, so I think this is a photo that we've seen last year, and what was that again? It, I think we, no, not last year, but two years ago, we went into a demonstration, and I have no idea what it says, but I thought it was just funny to take a photo. Also, not a very good view of the Eiffel Tower yet, uh, last year, because it was all foggy. Anyway, this is just a fun thing that I, I, I tend to lots of photos of. Uh, another thing is, I'm addicted to Foursquare. And you can see where I've checked in in Paris over the last uh, three years, I suppose. And that is a lot of times. Again, this is very little to do with OpenStreetMap myself. I still think it's a cool demo. And you can basically see that I have addictions as well. Now, okay, the further I zoom out, the more of a problem this becomes. Because there's more and more data, and there's lots and lots of them. Now, let me go back to the uh, Flickr photos. Because as you can see, well, once it loads, you can see that I have done quite a lot of photos all over Europe. Uh, for example, I've taken 283 in Paris, but let me zoom out a little bit. You can see that okay, it takes some time to load because there is a lot of data behind this. So if I s scroll down a little bit to see what I've taken in Norway, the first time I did this is actually you see Paris disappear, even though Paris is still very clearly on the map. Now the reason why this is, is because I'm using a query that selects the most northern point, the most southern point, the most eastern point, and the most western point. And when you do a query with a box like this, it isn't actually square anymore. Because the closest point it, between here and here, the closest line, is actually like this. Because the Earth is, of course, not a sphere. And this kind of things, I've actually been writing an extension for in PHP. It's by far not finished. But it calculates like shortest distances, as well as curvatures and things like this. And of course, I need to fix my Flickr code now to make sure that I actually create the real box instead of uh, just the shortest distance between two points. And the further you zoom out, of course, the more this becomes a problem because of the distortions of the Earth, like this, for example. And yeah, you get really interesting shapes and stuff like that. So this is an extension that I've been working on. Uh, another example that I can show is a time zone map, which you might not be aware of. I'm the maintainer of the PHP date time support as well. So I've created a map that allows you to point anywhere in the world and it tells you the time zone and the time for that. So I can click on this and it tells you the time is currently 1 p.m. CET. Is that correct? Should be correct. That also means I have exactly 15 minutes left. Five minutes left. Oh no, I might have to hurry up then. All right, so the first time I did this demo, there was actually a bit of a problem because, as you can see, France has quite a lot of points as their outline. And there were so many points that you can still see my browser struggling with it. There's so many points that it takes the browser so much time to render the lines around it that yeah, it's just too slow. So the extension that I've written also has information, or also has a function that allows you to simplify lines. By simplifying lines, it takes a lot less time to then draw things on the map. Still, this was still too slow for the whole world, so I've created a different layer, which is a layer that shows you all the time zones in the world, which I think is a pretty cool map and is at least very colorful. Anyway, that's what I had to talk about OpenStreetMap, and what I've done with it, some plays with it. Um, the demo that I've just shown you is actually available on GitHub as well. Um, I will upload my slides that you can see through this year all at some point, probably later this afternoon after I've uploaded them. Uh, this link will go to another link that has the slides on it, but it also has a whole list of resources. Resources about OpenStreetMap, how to import data, it links to a few articles that I've written so that you can read more on this subject. Of course, if you have any questions, you feel, feel free to ask them now or send me an email, Derek at Derek Patton, 
or ask me questions on Twitter uh, and things like that. If there's any questions now, I'm sure um, somebody will run around with a microphone to ask you something. So I think you can ask questions in English, which I understand in French, which uh, you will understand and translate. You can also ask them in Dutch or Norwegian if you feel uh, necessary. Um, I have a question about uh, the reverse geocoding uh, API. Yes. If I want to do a lot of queries, is there any quotas or should I do it locally? Okay, it's a good question. Uh, Normally, Tim does have quotas. Uh, I think the quota is not more than one a second in a single thread. If you want to do that many geocoding things with it, talk to the operators and um, so that they're at least aware that you're doing it. And then they might ask you to set up your own instance of nominative. It is all open source software, so you can easily do that yourself. But for, of course, for testing, feel free to use a nominative.openstreetmap.org. Any more questions? I can't see anything. There's one all the way up front. Are we going to make this a joke? One up front, one in the back. That's a good exercise there. So, does OpenStreetMap also provide uh, address geocoding? So you can put in an address rather than a, um, a coordinate, and it'll map to the coordinate? Absolutely. Yep. Address information, because this is a volunteer run project. Address information depends on the area, how good it is. And nominate, so as you can see in France, the address data is really, really good. So it would work really, really well here. In the US, not lots of address information is available. But Nominatim uses an external data set from Tiger, if you're familiar with that, um, which is a large data set that also will provide you address points, but is not always very accurate. So street level addressing, that will work really well specific house numbers depending on the area where you are, I would say. Anything else? Uh, hi. Uh, I don't know if you, you, you already said it, that um, um, when you talk about, about um, uh, exporting that data, uh, uh, is it possible to um, to export only uh, set certain parts of uh, uh, like um, only uh, biggest uh, city of the world? So extracts you can download yourself through the API of any area that you want to do. If you want specific data, like you want all the cities or all the city points, there's also APIs to do that as well. So you can create a query to get all the cities or only all the cities and things like that. Okay. And uh, I have an another question. Sure. Uh, can you uh, add uh, uh, new layers, like uh, if you want uh, to add uh, uh, zones uh, with uh, you know, uh, uh, animal species? Zones with? Uh, zones with uh, animal species uh, mm -hmm. uh, that you can find uh, Okay. okay, so if data doesn't really belong in open tree map, like well, animal zones is what you say, I think, then leaflet as an API layer allows you to do many different layers. Uh, as you, in, in my demo, I actually, oh, oops, sorry, I already had eight or nine different ones, and there are all different layers that can lay on top of each other. So you can create your own, own layer and then use leaflet to lay them on top of each other. Is what I would recommend in that case. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, anything else? Yep, right there. So, last question. Last question, then we have lunch. Hello. Um, Hello. Does uh, vandalism exist in uh, OpenStreetMap like it could be in uh, Wikipedia? So, vandalism does exist, but it is mostly not vandalism that people do on purpose. Is people that think that they're just editing a known personal co copy of the map when they're doing this. Uh, all the vandalism does also happen. In London, we have seen this happening a few times, but it usually gets spotted within like a day, because there's so many eyes that look at the map in London, and I would think it's very similar for parents like that as well. Because it's quite a large 
OpenStreetMap community in France, that kind of things get detected very fast. Now, we do have some tools also that allow contributors to look at a certain area to see the changes. And there is some technology in the making that is much better at detecting specific vandalizing cases. Like a person joins a project and deletes 500 streets, for example. That is things that are so easily picked up that we have some technology for that to pick that up. Of course, we don't solve everything, but with so many eyes on the map, it is not much of a problem, as we have found out. You're welcome. Okay. All right.